the, that you didn't have to go back to the Olympics. So you gave yourself an out. You said, I can just do a jump, and then I win, and the, the well, then whatever I, else doesn't win. The fear doesn't win. Yeah. And so you did the first jump, and you were like, what happened then? Well, I did the first jump in a very safe, it was just myself and a coach, and the rest of the team was off competing, and, and we just went out, and, and once we got clearance from the doctor, we did just a single backflip, which is essentially what I'd done since I was 13 years old, and I did that jump, and I felt like it wasn't perfect, so then I wanted to do it a little bit better with a little bit straighter takeoff, and and then did that, and then it was, okay, well, I think I can still do this a little better, and there was still... There was still that that need to try and strive for that perfection in the sport, and and so it you know it brought back that same feeling that I had that got me into the sport, and and so it started there, and I knew that the Olympics was about a month away at that point, maybe a little bit less, and and I thought you know what. The spot, I worked hard for this, and the least I can do is, is give myself the opportunity to see whether or not that I can make this happen. Did fear enter into it? Fear was there every single jump, every single day, and, and increasingly as the Olympics got closer because, um, you know, you lose that invincible feeling that it it's not going to happen to me because such and such rationale which every athlete needs in some capacity because I'd learned that sometimes it does happen to you and it doesn't matter if you're not the worst or it doesn't matter that you've done more training that sometimes it's just it's your turn and it had been my turn and so then it was trying to convince myself and teach myself that if I could focus on the controllables and I put myself in the best chance to do what I needed to do and the more I spent thinking about everything I couldn't control the more likely it was going to be um, the ending that I didn't want. Uh, I've, something jumped, jumped out to me because I've heard this before, it's your turn. And actually I heard it in the context of uh, talking to an NHL fighter who punched a guy and the guy started seizing and had to be rushed to the hospital. And he, he said it was his turn and he said it was eventually going to happen to him. What is that? It's your turn. What's in there? Well, in, in extreme sport, accidents happen and people get hurt. And at some point, if you do the same thing and you show up, chances are you know, at, at some point your card is drawn and I'd been lucky to that point. I hadn't had any major injuries and not to say that, you know, you deserve it or anything like this, but if you flip a coin enough times, then eventually you're going to end up with the results. So it, it, it just is what it is. And, and when I look at my sport, that's just part of the risk that you embrace. And that's part of what makes it probably thrilling and exciting and you know I compare it to instead of hurting every single day like you do in a cross-country skiing where training is excruciating at every single turn in extreme sport it's fun and exciting until that one extreme event and mm -hmm. that one extreme event is different for everybody and for me it happened to be that it was my neck. <laughs> 